Thank you so much, Hitler. Um, oh, goodness. Now I really do have your full attention. This is very exciting. <laughs> um, but I, what I really wanted to talk about, and I was given, I guess, a lot of free reign to talk about what I wanted to talk about tonight, was I wanted to talk about all of the reasons that I'm actually able to stand here tonight and all of the people who made it possible for me to stand here. Um, <clears throat> so going way back to the beginning, I am here tonight because when I was nine years old, my father helped me conduct my first controlled scientific experiment. <laughs> I'll let you tell them what it was about. Um, and then when I was at the ripe old age of 13, I decided to become a geneticist because I was inspired by the words of a journalist who I have never met and probably never will, whose name I don't even remember. <laughs> and because when I was 24, the head of research at a small uh, agricultural research station in the Ivory Coast welcomed me into his lab for a year, which changed my life. But I'm also here because of a lot of other people. I'm here because, I'm here because of my grandmothers. Because growing up, they told me all of their stories of immigrating to the United States under conditions of the Great Depression and world wars, which cut short their own educations, but allowed them to work to give their children and their grandchildren opportunities they never even dreamed of. And I'm here because when I was working in Africa, I heard echoes of my grandmother's stories in the stories of the scientists that I met and worked with there. Um, men and women who were incredibly talented, well-educated, but because of, again, the accident of where and when they were born, had their ambitions incredibly curtailed. And I'm here because I had the good fortune to notice that one of the things that was holding them back was a lack of resources that were incredibly abundant in my own backyard. And because myself and some fellow graduate students in the basement of Harvard Medical School decided that maybe we could take a leap of faith and use the resources at our disposal to bridge that gap. And that was many years ago now, it was more than 10 years ago, and that idealistic dream of some graduate students in the basement has, is becoming a reality every single day because of so many people who have joined in working together to make that dream a reality. People from the public sector and the private sector, from academia, from biotech and pharmaceutical companies, and foundations, and now even the US government are joining with us to invest in scientists around the world. And it's those scientists around the world that are the most on my mind tonight and why I stand here. And I think that I really stand on their shoulders. They're scientists who stay with me every day, whose pictures I have hanging above my desk at work every day. Scientists like my very dear friend, Dr. Mildred Nawiri. Mildred, who dreams of curing cancer by unlocking the antioxidant power of indigenous Kenyan vegetables. And Ricardo Morbidani, who 10 years ago went back to his home country of Argentina to start his lab and sent me pictures of that lab, which was mostly empty. And he has spent 10 years riding the ups and downs of the economy of his country and fighting for funding to keep his research going. He has built instruments by hand himself. He turned a refrigerator into an incubator so that he could continue his work on tuberculosis and develop this diagnostic that Jack alluded to that will cost pennies and be able to be taken into all of the rural areas of his country and other countries to be able to test for the disease exactly where it has the greatest burden. And scientists like Al-Mustafa Maiga, who originally wanted to be a businessman and the stroke of a bureaucrat's pen sent him to pharmacy school, and now these many years later he's cultivating a network of researchers on three continents. And he sent me emails two summers ago while he was keeping his HIV research lab open in Bamako, Mali, even as the news was filled with daily reports of potential attacks on his city by separatist rebels. Mildred and Ricardo and Al-Mustafa and countless other scientists like them do this work every single day at great personal sacrifice 
in the face of political and social and economic obstacles that we can only barely even comprehend. Why do they do this? Why do they do this? And why is it so important for us to support them? They do this in part because they had the opportunity, the way I had it, starting at the age of nine, to experience that wonder of science, that incredible moment when something works, and that joy of discovery. But they do this, and I do this, because we know that the challenges that face us today require the skills of scientists more than ever before in history. And we need to draw on the strength of all of these talented scientists around the world to be able to meet the challenges of this new frontier. How else are we going to bring power and light to every single village around the world? How else are we going to feed our ever-growing global population? How else are we going to conquer the diseases that have demonstrated lately more powerfully than ever before that they do not stop at national borders. It's going to take science. And it's going to take a kind of science that brings the world together, that unites all of us. And we're here in Massachusetts. We pride ourselves, and we pride ourselves justly, on having some of the most advanced labs in the world, on being a hub that draws in the best of the best from everywhere. But even here, we cannot ever have the human resources needed to solve all of these problems for all of the world. What my vision is, is the kinds of labs that we pride ourselves on in Massachusetts become commonplace in cities on every single continent. And my vision is that the joys and the benefits of doing science are as attainable for a girl growing up in Cameroon as for a girl growing up in Chicago. And my vision is of a new kind of Peace Corps, a global science corps, where young American researchers can work side by side with their counterparts everywhere in the world, tackling these problems together, creating solutions, and expanding that map of scientific discovery. I know that this is not a small vision. It's not a small vision. It will take all of us working together it will take reimagining how we use our resources and re-envisioning who our colleagues are and how we work with them around the world. But I know that this is the world as it can be. And if we are standing in the shadow of the legacy of a man who saw footprints on the moon, then we can do nothing less than contemplate equally big visions. So thank you so much for envisioning that world with me today and for this award that takes us a few steps down the path towards realizing it. <laughs>